when Napoleon created the Legion of Honor, it was to reunify a nation after the French Revolution. Je vous fais chevalier de la Légion d'honneur. La Légion d'honneur, elle est connue dans le monde entier. Hello and welcome to this week's France in Focus. I'm Nadia Massey. Now, from the French football team to Charles de Gaulle, a hugely diverse group of people have been nominated for France's most prestigious award, and that's the Légion d'honneur. Now, the decisions about who's done enough to join the celebrated ranks of the Légionnaire are made in this building just behind me. It's normally closed to the public, but we've gained rare access today, so let's go in and take a look around. It all began with Napoleon in 1802, who established the Légion d'honneur to celebrate military and civilian contributions to France. Two years later, in 1804, the Légion d'honneur was formally given a home here, in the palatial marble-lined rooms of the Great Chancery, on the left bank of the River Seine. Napoleon's imposing portrait still looks down on those who come through here to collect their medals. But how precisely do you get a Légion d'honneur and how does the process really work? Here's a closer look for you. There are currently 92,000 people decorated with the Legion of Honor in France. Half of them are from the military, the other half civilian, and amongst those, the awards are divided equally between the sexes. There are five orders of increasing distinction from Knight to Grand Cross. People move up the ranks on the basis of merit, with intervals of several years between three and eight, depending on the level. You don't have to be French to be received into the Legion, but you must have served the French nation. The order is for those who excel in their trade, be it the military, agriculture, industry, research, arts, or sport, but they need to have practiced it for at least 20 years. People can also be recognized for exceptional services, such as acts of bravery. Finally, some are awarded on a diplomatic basis as part of French foreign policy. Appointments or promotions are suggested by government ministers based on the advice of elected officials, public sector workers, businesses, and charities. Citizens may also put forward worthy recipients with the support of 50 signatures. The Order's Council then gives its opinions on the minister's proposals, and then it's up to the president to make the final decision. Members of the Legion are able to register their daughters, granddaughters, and great-granddaughters in the Legion of Honor's prestigious state schools. But contrary to rumor, the award isn't financial. That is, apart from a symbolic annual sum granted exclusively to the military, from just over six euros for the rank of knight to around 36 for a Grand Cross. Over the centuries, as France has changed, the Légion d'honneur has changed too. It now focuses on civilian contributions more than military ones and ensures there are as many women nominated every year as men. Now, it's around this table that the decisions about who gets a Légion d'honneur are made, and in the past few years, there have been some big and some controversial decisions. One group of people has a special mention in this year's list of recipients of the Legion of Honor, the French national football team. The winners of the World Cup have been distinguished for their exceptional service, which also happened the last time France won it, in 1998. One, two, three, zero. This is fair reward for a victory undertaken with patience, discretion, intelligence and resilience by Aimé Jacquet and his staff. It was driven by 22 exceptional players. This year, alongside the athletes, there are honours for artists such as the writer Michelle Welbeck and the actress Natalie Bai. A quarter of the 402 recipients come from the business world, rewarded for their innovations, strategy or creation of jobs. The bravery of both police officers and firefighters and of regular citizens has been rewarded too. Marine Sauvageon is now a Knight of the Legion of Honor for having defended a couple who were kissing in public in November 2016. Back in 2015, François Hollande decorated three Americans and one Brit for having intercepted an armed assailant on a train. 
Other foreign citizens have received the honor for defending human rights and French values. Dr. Denis Mukwege is one, rewarded in 2013 for his work with female victims of sexual violence in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Foreign heads of state are another common recipient, an honor given for diplomatic reasons addressed to a nation, not an individual. It's not the head of state who is honored, but the state itself. In Ecuador, there were four heads of state, alternating every six months. De Gaulle told them, you will receive one Legion of Honor. The head of state in place at the time responded, wait, you must award four. There are four of us. I cannot accept it. What about the others? De Gaulle stood firm. It would be one or nothing. Giving the award to heads of state has at times been controversial. Mussolini and Franco were both honored. In modern times, Bashar al-Assad was given the distinction by Jacques Chirac in 2001. The French president hoped to encourage his Syrian counterpart to take a different path to that of his father, Hafez al-Assad, known for his oppressive regime. Giving a legion of honor to a political opponent can be a useful tool. If it pleases them, it can establish a point of contact. Bashar al-Assad's own actions since has forced France to look into stripping him of the honor. His case is still being examined in Paris, though Damascus has preempted its findings by already returning the cross. Up till now, no honor has been withdrawn from a foreign head of state. Doing so posthumously is not possible. Lance Armstrong was stripped of his award for doping, fashion designer John Galliano for anti-Semitism. After multiple allegations of sexual assault, film producer Harvey Weinstein is in the process of having his taken away. Maurice Papon, an official for France's Vichy regime during World War II, was stripped of his honor in 1998, after his trial and conviction on charges of crimes against humanity, though it did not stop his family burying him with his medal. Finally, there are those who have refused the distinction. Every year, at least five honors are rejected. I do not understand this honor. I constantly mock the French state and its institutions. Refusal or not, they remain on the honors list, even if they do not show up to the ceremony. To find out some more unusual stories of the Légion d'honneur, let's head next door to the museum and talk to deputy curator Tom Dutay. Every president of France uh, becomes what's known as a grand master of the Légion d'honneur, and they get to wear some of these very ornate chains. Tell us a bit about them. When did the president wear this? The current president, like every president, received it during the investiture ceremony. Since uh, Valéry Giscard d'Estaing, the color is not worn. It is just received. This is a very important symbol of the Republic because this is the last, we could say, symbol of the head of state. During the monarchy, the empire, you add what we call the regalia, you add the sept, you add the globe, you add the crown, of course, today. There is nothing of that. Um, but you've got this one that is the symbol, the only symbol that is the only one of the president. We're looking here at some of the uh, medals uh, that you have. Is there anybody that, was, that did so well in their field that they were elevated right to the top, to the highest rank, first of all? Yes, actually a very symbolic and important uh, Person and example is Simone Veil. Ah, yes, the great feminist French icon. Yes, Simone Veil became directly great officer in 2009. Even though technically, since the beginning, in the time of Napoleon, women could get Légion d'honneur, it was quite rare for them to do so. Uh, when Napoleon created the Legion of Honor, it was what was very, very modern, it was a universal order. So there were nothing that was that uh, said, no woman in the order. But uh, we have to wait the Second Empire, 1851, to have the first woman, Angélique Brelon, uh, that received uh, the first, that was the first woman that was made Knight of the Legion of Honor. Just tell us finally then, there are perhaps, there are so many people, thousands of people that have been given a Légion d'honneur for civilian and for military reasons. Tell us 
Who's your favorite? Who do you think was most deserving of this award? Oh, I couldn't give you one example because I, I do not have a favorite recipient. But I, I can tell you that what is very interesting is when you study a decoration, you study a man or a woman, and is, most of the time his history is very interesting. I can tell you about the painter, David, that was made knight and then officer, and today we have his insignia in the museum, which is a very strong symbol for us. But we also have, uh, for example, Marshal Foch, uh, insignia of, uh, that he wore during the battle. And he, was, he wrote later saying, I'm wearing that during a battle because it's very important for me. And that is very interesting to see that even for them, it was a symbol, it was very important to get them. Absolutely, thank you very much indeed. Well, that's it for this week's France in Focus. Thanks for watching, and as always, do stay tuned to France 24.